Okay, so good afternoon everyone. So this topic naman Sorry, nagbabak lang sa akin hold on. Okay, so this will be the chapter 4 of the statistics and probability entitled hypothesis testing. Okay? So last meeting nung last na lesson na pinag-aralan natin, I've discussed to you guys yung um, normal distribution um, and also the application of normal distribution. Okay, so on that part, nalaman natin kung paano tayo mag-graph uh, ng, nor ng normal curve. Okay, kung nasa left ba siya, nasa right, and kung paano hahanapin yung area. Okay, so this time... Parang itong hypothesis testing kasi parang naririnig nyo na siya before during the research. Familiar ba kayo sa research? Or parang baby thesis kung tawagin ninyo nung grade 10 kayo? Okay, siguro yung iba, yung iba sa inyo already encountered research or baby thesis whatever during your junior high school day and meron po dun tiyatawag na hypothesis. Okay, so, etong hypothesis testing, magiging malaking tulong to sa inyo once po na nag-start na kayo ng research ninyo sa school. Okay? So, let's start. So, pag sinabi natin hypothesis testing, this is the method na ginagamit natin for statistical decision. We will not just making decision kasi nakita natin. Okay, magbe-base tayo everyone dun sa numbers na nag-gather natin na meron tayo. Okay, of course, using experimental data. Okay, hypothesis testing is basically an assumption that we can make about the population parameter. So, meron pa rin word na assumption. So, hindi siya ganun parang 100% na sure. Okay, but again, um, parang kinukuha lang natin to para malaman lang natin. Okay, parang out of the population, we will just getting a few part, an, a sample. Then from that sample, pwede na tayo mag-conclude. Okay, but again, that conclusion is not literally 100% sure. Kasi assumption lang din yun. Okay, so we have three methods how we're going to use to test the hypothesis. Number one is the traditional method. We have the p-value method and the confidence interval method. Okay, so yan yung mga method na gagamitin po natin. Okay, dito sa example ko, alam ko meron akong example ng p-value method and a traditional method. Okay? So, next one, ano naman sir yung procedure? Hindi lang naman po tayo basta-basta magkukonclude ng hypothesis without steps or without procedures na dapat natin sundin. Okay, so all hypothesis testing situations start with the stating the statistical hypothesis. Okay, so sasabihin mo muna ano ba yung kailangan nating hanapin. Ano ba yung pinaka-problema? Okay. So, ganun po muna yung dapat nating malaman. Then, after that, the, uh, uh, the statistical hypothesis, this is naman the conjecture about the population parameter. Okay, the conjecture, pwede siyang totoo, pwede siyang hindi. So, ginagamit natin yung hypothesis testing para din po malaman natin kung totoo o hindi ba. <clears throat> so, meron tayong dalawang hypothesis. Uh, there are two types of statistical hypothesis, what I mean. Number one is the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So, any idea po ba kung ano yung null hypothesis? Anyone? Hello? Meron po ba mag-share since I think I gave it to you kagabi yung PowerPoint and yung module nung Monday? 
Meron po ba magbibigay ng kanilang opinion about the null hypothesis? Sir, H sub zero. What do you mean by H sub zero? H sub zero. H sub zero, sir. Okay, Kier. So, sabi ni Kier, H sub zero. So, that H sub zero is the symbol for the null hypothesis. Okay, pero ano pa? Thank you, Kier. So, tama naman yun. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin pag sinabi natin null hypothesis? Sir? Yes, Arnold. Ano, sir? It proposed that there is no difference between certain characteristics of a population or data generating process. Okay, so ibig sabihin po, wala silang pagkakaiba, therefore, they are equal. Okay, walang pinagkaiba yung isang mean dun sa pangalawa. Okay, sabi nga din ni Kier, um, H sub O will be the symbol that we're going to use for the null hypothesis. And sabi naman ni Arnold, uh, kapag sinabi yung null hypothesis, there will be no difference between the two population mean. Okay, therefore, H sub O is to mean sub 1 is equal to the mean sub 2. So, equal lang sila. Okay? Paano naman kapag alternative? Pabalitaran po ng null hypothesis. May pinagkaiba po. There is a difference daw po. Okay. So, kung sa null hypothesis, there's no difference. Kasi equal sila. For the alternative naman, ayan, there's a difference between the two population mean. And the symbol that we will be using will be H sub 1. Sa ibang libro, ang symbol dito is H sub A. Okay, but sa atin, gamitin natin H sub 1. Okay, H sub 0 for the null hypothesis, and then H sub 1 for the alternative. Okay, next one will be the level of significance. So, pag sinabi natin level of significance, this is referring to the degree of significance that which we will be accepting or ire-reject ba natin yung null hypothesis. Okay, of course, alam, man, alam naman natin na 100% accuracy yon, but it's not possible for accepting or rejecting a null hypothesis. Okay, so ano pa yung usually ginagamit o ilang percent yung usually ginagamit as a level of significance? Okay, we will be using 1% and 5%. Okay? Pero yung lagi talagang ginagamit talaga dyan is 5%. Kasi mas malaki-laki siya ng konti sa 1%. So parang once na kinuha natin yung hypothesis testing, mas malapit talaga siya sa gusto natin mangyari. Kasi kapag 1%, parang napakaliit lang ng chance and konti lang din yung probability na mare-reject or maa-accept yung null hypothesis. Okay, but I have here examples, uh, a 1% and also... 5%. Pero tandaan nyo lagi ang usually or common use uh, percentage for the level of significance is 5% or 0.05. Okay, so after natin mahanap yung significance level, next po is yung critical value. So, sir, saan natin malalaman yan? Okay, gagamitin natin yung isa pang table na nandun po sa module natin. Kung familiar pa kayo. May, nag-send ba ako ng bagong table? Di ba may table tayo before? Matanong ko lang kung nag-send ako ng bago. Wala po ata, sir. Mga linto. Meron ba kayong nakita sa module na uh, T-test? Distribution for T-test, I think. Ay, critical value for students T-distribution. Walang ganon? <clears throat> okay, kung wala naman, anyway, papakita ko naman sa inyo mamaya. Okay, so from the use of the table, we will be selecting the critical value. 
And if you say critical value, that will be the shaded part of the normal curve. And do natin malalaman kung reject or accepted. Okay? So, meron tayong tinatawag na critical and non-critical regions. So, pag sinabi natin critical value, ito yung value na nagsa-separate into the non-critical and critical region. Okay? Sir, ano yun? Kung natatandaan nyo pa nung normal distribution, yung, for example, 1.85, yung mga ganon, Okay, yung mga example natin, yung Z-test, sabihin natin, yung C-score pala, yun yung parang critical value dito sa hypothesis testing. Okay, but hindi na po yun yung gagamitin nating table, may bago tayong table, pero ipapakita ko rin sa inyo later. Okay, and meron din tayong tinatawag na critical or the rejection region. So, ito yung range from the critical value na kung saan, kapag po ang nakuha nating answer is nandoon sa, naglalay siya dun sa area na kung saan shaded yon ibig sabihin po, rejected siya. Kasi nandoon siya sa critical region. Okay, ulitin ko ha. Yung critical region, yun yung area na shaded. Kapag kasi shaded part, ibig sabihin po nun, bawal siya mag-lie doon. Hindi naman sa bawal. I mean, kapag nag-lie kasi doon yung answer natin, um, rejected na agad siya. Okay? Kapag naman doon sa non-critical region, ito naman yung area na hindi shaded doon sa, no sa normal curve. And once po na nandito yung answer natin, okay, accepted naman po yung null hypothesis or we will not be rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay, so para mas malinawang kayo, mamaya may papakita kong um, image, illustration, identifying kung nasan yung uh, critical value, crit na non-rejection region, and then the rejection region. Okay. On this hypothesis testing also, guys, meron tayong one-tailed and two-tailed. Kung natatandaan nyo before, nung nagdo-drawing tayo ng normal curve, I have an example na curve to the left, curve to the right, then meron ding both sides. Okay. Ito po siya. Pag sinabi natin right-tailed and then left-tailed, under siya ng one-tailed. Ibig sabihin, either of the two, kung nasa right man siya or nasa left siya, one tail siya naglalaya. Okay, so, shows that the null hypothesis be rejected when the test value is in the critical region on one side of the mean. So, ganun pa rin yung mean natin nasa gitna. So, depende po sa given if it will be on the left side or on the right side. Okay? Then, kapag sinabi naman natin two-tailed, ayo ibig sabihin po nun, both sides. Meron siyang critical region sa right, meron din siya sa left. Okay? So, yun yung pinagkaiba nung dalawa. So, kapag sinabi ko na left-tailed, automatically po, it's lying on a one-tailed. Left or right, under siya ng one-tailed. So, ito yung relationship para alam nyo na rin agad once na nakita nyo yung mga signs na to. Okay, alam ko na to. It is two-tailed. This is a left-tailed and a right-tailed. Okay, tignan nyo yung table ah. Okay. So, meron tayong signs for the null hypothesis. Ito, ito yung null. And for alternative. And sasabihin ko na din kung nasan yung rejection region. Okay, focus tayo muna sa two-tailed. So, kapag two-tailed, lagi po siyang equal and not equal. Equal siya sa null hypothesis, not equal sa alternative. Ito po yung dalawang sign na gagamitin kapag 
two-tailed. And of course, the rejection region will be on the both tails or both sides. Kapag left-tailed naman, <clears throat> ang gagamitin natin is greater than or equal. The mu is greater than or equal to k for the null hypothesis. And sa alternative, less than. Okay? Kapag, ayan yung nakita ninyo, automatically, that will be a left-tailed test. And yung rejection region niya is nasa left tail. Kapag right tailed naman, kabaliktaran lang nung left tailed. Ulitin ko lang para kasi naging choppy. Uh, kapag right tailed yung pinag-uusapan naman natin, Kabaliktaran lang siya nung left-tailed. So, this time, kapag null hypothesis, less than or equal. And then, kapag alternative, greater than. So, sir, ano bang ibig sabihin nung K na yan? So, that K will be a specified number. Depende po yan sa given. Okay? So, ito yung signs na makikita ko. <clears throat> Once na nag-conclude tayo ng hypothesis. Okay? Next one. Okay. Share ko lang din sa inyo itong mga common phrases na makikita nyo sa word problem para ma-identify nyo na agad kung equal ba yung gagamitin yung sign, not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal, or less than or equal. So, alam nyo naman na kapag sinabi natin equal, ayan, exactly the same, the same as. So, yan yung mga common terms or phrases na ginagamit natin. Pero hindi lang po ayan, ha? So, marami pa pong iba. So, familiarize yourself on, the, on those phrases para hindi na po kayo malilito. Okay, again, um, yung signs, hindi siya binibigay directly. This is given by phrases, ha? Kasi yung mga examples natin, naka-word problem po. Okay, so ito naman siya. A critical value approaching the hypothesis testing. So, mamaya explain ko na yan sa inyo. Mas maganda explain yan kapag may drawing. So, sir, paano kapag yung critical value na approach niyo yung hypothesis testing natin? So, what will happen ba? Okay, this is an example of the normal curve ng right tail. Okay, kung mapapansin ninyo, the rejection region is on the right tail of the normal curve and the alpha or the level of significance used is 0.05 or 5%. So, same pa din naman po yan ang gagawin natin. Magda-drawing tayo ng normal curve. Nasa gitna pa din po yung mean. And then, etong line na to, this will be the critical region. Ah, critical value. Sorry. So, this will be the critical value. Siya yung separate for the non-rejection region and then the rejection region. And then, ito namang parang may shaded part. Yan yung critical region. Na kung saan, kapag po si A napunta dito, we will be rejecting the null hypothesis. And this is the example naman ng left tail. So, alpha, 0.05, 5%. Still the same, critical value, critical region. And then kapag nag-lay po dyan yung alpha, we will be rejecting again the null hypothesis. And then kapag both, ganyan yung magiging itsura niya. So, both sides, meron na tayong critical region. 
And once na naglay po doon, we will be rejecting again the null hypothesis. So those are the examples of a illustration of a 0 0.05 level of significance and kung paano po ninyo mag-visualize yung critical value and differentiating the critical region into the non-critical region. Any questions so far? So, ano po ba ibig sabihin ng kapag nireject? Uh, once we reject, ibig sabihin po yung kiniklaim natin or yung gusto nating patunayan is hindi totoo. Depende kasi siya, Arnold, sa kiniklaim natin sa word problem. For example, ang claim natin is yung null hypothesis. Yung gusto nating patunayan na is naglalay siya sa null hypothesis. Tapos, napunta siya sa critical region. Ibig sabihin, yung gusto nating patunayan is hindi totoo. Okay, based po sa statistical record natin. Okay, mamaya papakita ko sa, iyo, sa inyo, Arnold, kung ano ba yung sinasabi ni Sir na claim. Okay, sa mga examples natin, mamaya papakita ko. Para mas malinaw sa inyo. Sir, bakit ba nare-reject? Bakit ba na-accept? And kailan ba i-reject? -re kailan natin i-accept? Okay? So, Mami Arnold, bear with me on the examples. Mas maliliwanagang kayo. Okay, any question aside from that? Okay, let's proceed. Okay, so that next topic... For, diba, that's, that, that is just the introduction for the hypothesis testing. The next topic will be the one sample Z test. Sir, para sa yung kanina, kailangan kasi dito sa one sample Z test yung hypothesis testing. Okay, para malaman natin kung ano yung kiniklaim natin so that we can make a conclusion. Okay, so sa one sample Z test, ginagamit natin siya if the sample size is greater than or equal sa 30. So, kapag less than 30, hindi natin siya pwede gamitin. But if it is greater than 30 or equal to 30, so we will be using the one sample Z test. Okay? So, this will be the formula. So, the test value is equal to the observed value minus the expected value all over the standard deviation. Sir, ano yan? Okay. Ito po ang formula na yan. So, Z is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean all over. It's either population yung standard deviation or nakasample. Then, we will be dividing it into the square root of N. So, ito po yung dalawang formula na gagamitin natin depende sa standard deviation. Kung population, yung una. Ito. Pag sample yung standard deviation, itong part. Itong pangalawang formula. Okay, so tandaan nyo na yung formula ha. So, ulitin ko lang. Sample mean minus population mean divide sa standard deviation, divide sa square root ng n. Okay? So, let's have an example. Anyone who can read example number one? Babasahin lang po para naman may interaction tayo dito. Who would like to volunteer? Golifardo? Adito si Golifardo? Uh, Golifardo, pwede pakibasa ng example number one? Okay po. A researcher reports that the average salary of college students is more than 
60,000, a sample of 35 colors. The dance has a mean salary of 5,700. At 3 equals 0.1. Test the claim that the college dance and more than 60,000 a month. The standard division of the population is 5,000. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ania. So, this is example number one. Okay, sir, ano pa yung gagawin natin dito? Okay, ito yung mga hahanapin natin. So, we will be having seven steps to answer example number one. First thing that we will be doing is to identify the given. So, much better kung isusulat yun agad yung given para hindi na kayo babalik doon sa mismong word problem. Kasi identified nyo na kung ano yung mga given na sinabi. Okay, after that one, you will be stating the hypothesis and you will be identifying the claim. Sir, ano yun? Yung kanina, yung null hypothesis and then alternative hypothesis. Then, mamimili kayo sa dalawa not literally mamimili, depende sa given, alin po doon yung kiniklaim natin o yung gusto nating patunayan. Okay, once na kapag conduct na tayo ng hypothesis, level of significance, either 0.01 or 0.05. And then, the critical value using the new table na ipapakita ko sa inyo, and then, computation, yung formula kanina na sample mean minus population mean over standard deviation over the square root of n. <clears throat> and then, syempre, decision rule. Ire-reject ba natin? I-accept ba natin yung null hypothesis? And then, magdodrawing din tayo ng normal curve. Para mas makikita natin, bakit ba na-reject, bakit ba na-accept. Then lastly, conclusion. So ano ba yung magiging conclusion natin since na-reject natin or na-accept natin yung null hypothesis? So kailangan kapag nag-solve tayo, I have step 1 hanggang step 7. Okay? Are you ready everyone? Okay, una muna, balikan natin yung ano ha, word problem. Take a screenshot, kasi magtatanong ako kung ano yung given dyan. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, let's continue. Okay, let's find the given. What is the sample mean? For example, number one. Anyone? 65,700. Okay, so the sample mean is 65,700. Thank you so much, Arnold. Paano mo nasabi, Arnold, na ito yung sample mean? Meron bang word or hint dun sa word problem? Based sa sentence, may nakalagay po a sample of 35 college students. So, sample po lang po, dun, dun na lang po ako nag-base. Okay, very good observation, Arnold. So, since on the beginning of the sentence, on the second sentence, may word na a sample of uh, 35 college din, then biglang um, sumunod yung word na mean, therefore, that mean will be for the sample. So, thank you so much, Arnold. How about the population mean? 5,250. 5,250? 5, Agree po ba tayo sa sinabi ni Cyril? 63. 35, sir. Oh, wait lang. May sabi si Cyril. Cyril?
Okay, nawawala siya. Arnold, ano yung sabi mo kanina? 35 po. 35. Population oh, mean na, population mean. Mean yung pinag-uusapan natin. This is 63,000. Okay. The population mean everyone. 63. Okay, very good, Cyril and Arnold. It's 63,000. Sir, bakit? Bakit siya naging mean? Uh, yung unang-unang sentence, a researcher reports that the average salary... So, from that one, alam na natin, average salary, the word average is for the mean, and that is for the population mean. Kaya 63,000. Okay? How about the standard deviation? Is it population or sample? Population. Okay, population. And ano yung population standard deviation natin? 5,250. Okay, it's 5,250. Very good. And lastly, the sample or the letter N. 5,250. Again? 35. Okay. 35. Okay, so ito yung given natin. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, lahat na is given para dun sa formula. So, hindi na tayo may hirapan. Okay? So, yan yung unang gagawin na hanapin or identified first the given. After nun, ano yung second step? Ano yung second step natin? State the hypothesis State the hypothesis and identify the claim. Okay, so we will be stating the hypothesis and then identify natin yung claim. Okay, so this time guys, para malaman ninyo kung ano yung gagamitin ninyong simbol, dapat naging familiarized na kayo dun sa common phrases na ginagamit for equal, not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal, and then less than or equal. Diyan sa word problem, ano yung nakikita ninyong clue or hint for those symbols? More than. More than. Very good. Sino nagsabi nun? Christian? Oh, kapag more than Christian, ano siya? Nasanal ba siya or alternative hypothesis? Alternative. Alternative. Very good. Is it left-tailed or right-tailed? Right-tailed. Sure kayo? Okay, so that will be right-tailed. Uh, kung right-tailed tayo, ano ang nala hypothesis? Ano ba yung kapartner ng more than or greater than? Less than equal. Equal. Arnold, since sinabi mo na less than or equal, can you kindly state to us what is the null hypothesis? For this scenario? Kaya na ba? Hindi pa, Arnold. Okay. Pero at least you have your idea na ha? Na right-tailed siya. Tapos more than. And that is alternative. So, okay na ako doon. At least you already visualized everyone kung ano ba yung hypothesis natin. And for sure, alam niyo na rin kung ano yung ikiklain natin. So, kapag gagawa tayo ng hypothesis, guys, focus tayo sa population mean. 
Kasi ang pinakahanap sa atin or yung gustong patunayan ng researcher daw that the average salary of the college deans is more than 63,000. So, since more than, nandun siya sa alternative. So, yung null hypothesis niya is less than or equal to 63,000. And yung alternative, since nakita niyo yung word na more than, that will be greater than 63,000. Alin dyan yung kiniklaim natin? Yung null hypothesis or yung alternative? Alternative po. Okay. Yung alternative po yung kiniklaim natin dyan. Okay. Kasi meron pong word na more than. Okay. Very good. So, alam nyo na kung ano yung sinasabi ko na claim. Maliwanag ba sa inyo kung paano mag-identify ng claim? Apo. Very good. O, oh, papakita ko sa inyo yung table ulit, ha? So, ito tayo. So, sir, paano mo na-identify yan? So, ito siya. More than daw. And that is under alternative hypothesis. So, kapag alam nyo ng greater than, ito na yung gagamitin nyo for the null hypothesis. Less than or equal to. Okay? Next one. Level of significance. What is the level of significance for this example? Given din yun. Alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Okay. So, the alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Another word for level of significance or the symbol that we will be using for the level of significance is yung parang gayan, letter A. And that is the alpha. Okay? Malinaw ba kung paano kuha yung level of significance? Siyempre naman, given na yan. Eh. So, wala magkakamali dyan. Ah. Next one. At yung sinasabi ko sa inyong bagong table na gagamitin po natin. Okay. So, mamaya, after neto, Send ko to sa Google Classroom natin and then also sa group chat natin. So, sa bagong table, meron kayo makikitang, ayan, confidence level. So, meron tayong 50%, 80, 90, 95, 98, 99. Okay? Meron din tayong one tail or two tail. Kasi, di ba, sabi ko sa inyo kanina, Meron tayong one tail that is the left and the right. Then, meron din tayong two-tailed. So, naka-identify din po dito itong 0 0.250, 0 0.1. Ito yung level of significance. So, kapag given is percentage na level of significance, convert lang natin sa decimal point. And then, dito naman, may makikita kayong DF. That is degree of freedom. And then, yung sa pinakababang baba ng table na to, kasi ante, from 1 to 30. Then, sa baba ng 30, alam ko nga hanggang 100 pati. So, from start ng 1 hanggang 100, meron din greater than 500. Then, yung pinakalas talaga is yung letter Z. Dito lang tayo titingin sa letter Z. Ulitin ko ha, dito lang tayo titingin ha, sa mga numbers na to. Identify muna natin kung one-tailed or two-tailed. Then, tingin sa pinakababa ng table, yung may letter Z. Then, pagtapatin natin. Okay. Dito ba sa example natin, one-tailed or two-tailed? Hello? One-tailed one ba to or two-tailed? Okay, may narinig ako one-tailed. 
very good. Nasaan dyan yung level of significance kung one-tailed? Is it 0 0.250? 0 0.100? 0 0.010. Okay. Arnold, hindi siya dun sa 99, ha? Tingnan natin, Arnold, ulit, ha? Kung one-tailed or two-tailed. So, since right-tailed to, under siya ng one-tail. And then, tama naman yung isa. Sino yung nagsabing 0.01? O, kung sino man siya, tama po siya. Yan po yung level of significance natin. Then, tingin tayo dito sa letter Z. Pagtatapatin natin sila, ito yung magiging answer natin. 2.326 And that will be the Z critical value. Maliwanag? Okay. So, yan yung gagamitin natin, ha? 2.326. So, after ng critical value, ano yung next nating step? Compute. Okay. So, magkocompute na tayo. So, gamit yung mga given na nakita natin kanina, substitute lang natin lahat. Okay? So, this will be the sample mean, 65,700 minus 63,000 over 5,250 Divide square root ng 35. Okay. Substitute lang yung ginawa ko, ha. Now, try to solve kung pareho tayo ng answer na 3.043. Sir, bakit? Same. Ay, same. Di ba sinabi ko naman na yung kagabi na compute ninyo kung kaya ninyo para ngayon mag uh, ano lang tayo um, compare lang natin so kung same very good you get your uh, you get the correct answer which is 3.043 <coughs> sir di ba sir sabi mo two decimal place lagi tayo bakit this time naka three decimal place okay naka three decimal place sa mga anak Kasi yung critical value natin sa table, naka 3 decimal place din. So, we will be following that. Kasi sila po yung i-compare natin. The critical value and then the, itong Z. Understand? Yung iba may tanong ba kung, ba, kung paano nakuha itong 3.043? Oh, for the sake ng iba, computein natin, ha? So, kung wala kayong scientific calculator na kung saan na input nyo to lahat, yung FX something ng kasyo, kasi mas upgraded siya, kapag kasyo lang na yung parang screen niya lang is maliit, hindi nyo to may input lahat ng sabay-sabay. Unless, alam nyo gamitin yung parenthesis. Kasi yung parenthesis po, sila po yung nag indicate sa calculator kung sino yung unang isosolve nila. Okay, so kung wala, magmamano-mano tayo dito. So, first thing that you're going to do is to subtract 65,700 sa 63,000. So, ang magiging answer po niyan is? 2,700. Okay, that will be 2,700. And then, after po nun, di-divide nyo na. Pero nakikita nyo, meron tayong naka-square root na 35. So, simplify po muna natin to. Ano yung square root ng 35? Ha? Ah? Ang square root ng 35, based on the calculator, is 5.9... 160 
0917-1779-7931. So, kung gusto ninyong kompleto, okay lang. Kung i-round off nyo sa 2 decimal place, okay lang din. So, that will be 5.92. Okay, next step. Divide muna natin yung nasa baba. Or yung nandito sa ilalim, denominator. 5,250 times 5.92. Ah, times, divide pala, sorry. Ang kalalabasan naman, base po sa calculator, is 887.411967464.9. Kapag ginamit nyo yung buong decimal places. Ngayon, kung ang ginamit ninyo is itong 5.92, ang magiging answer po dyan is 886.82. May difference ng konti. Okay lang po yun. Okay, hindi naman mahala. Ah, mahalaga naman siya kasi maliit lang na difference, malaki na epekto dito sa computation natin. Pero in the end, Kapag dinivide natin itong dalawa, we will be just having the same answer, which is 3.043. Okay, maliwanag ba? Opo. Okay. Kung meron kayong calculator na upgraded, yung maganda-ganda, pwede nyo siyang e-diretsyong computation. Diretsyong input to dun sa calculator. Pero kung wala po tayong ganun, Okay lang, mano-mano, isa-isa natin gagawin. Okay? So, after ng competition, tandaan ninyo ha, ito yung nakuha natin, 3.043. Decision na tayo. Are we going to accept or reject the null hypothesis? Sa tingin nyo ba, reject or accept? Okay, so, alamin natin. So, we will be rejecting the null hypothesis since yung 3.043 is greater than sa critical value na 2.326. So, para mas ma-visualize, drawing tayo ng normal curve. So, pasensya na sa drawing niya, sir, ha? So, this will be the normal curve. Ito yung mean. And then, yung critical value, sabi ka din na, it's 2.326. So, ito po yung critical region. Ngayon, yung nakuha nating letter Z na 3.043, mas mataas. So, nandito siya banda. So, ito yung 3.043. So, nandito siya sa shaded region, nandito siya sa critical region. Kapag nasa critical region, ano, anong sabi ko kanina? We will be rejecting the null hypothesis. Nagets nyo na ba? Okay. So, last step, conclusion. Anyone na pwede pong mag, ano sa akin ng conclusion? Ano kayong pwede natin ikonkulud natin dito? Since, ang sabi kanina, rejected na yung null hypothesis. Okay, so, ako muna, tapos mamaya sa ibang example kayo na. So, ang conclusion natin dito, so, since we reject the null hypothesis, ibig sabihin po, yung kiniklaim natin is enough yung evidence para sabihin na yung salary college din or yung monthly salary na college din is more than 63,000. 
Balik, sulat ko dito yung hypothesis kanina. Yung H sub O natin, H sub O, that is mu less than or equal to 63,000. Tapos yung alternative hypothesis natin, mu is greater than 63,000. Ito yung claim. etong alternative. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung gustong patunayan ng researcher na ang sahod daw ng college din is mas mataas pa sa 63,000. Okay? Ano ba yung nireject natin? Ang nireject natin is itong null hypothesis. So, ibig sabihin, X na to. Hindi siya totoo. Na mas mababa daw sa 63,000 yung sahod. So, alin dyan yung totoo? Or alin dyan yung napatunayan natin base po sa statistical record natin? etong alternative. So, etong alternative yung ia-accept natin. Pero hindi natin sasabihin yun ng ganon doon sa decision rule. Ang lagi lang natin ia-accept or lagi lang natin i-reject is yung null hypothesis. So, kung reject tong null hypothesis, ibig sabihin, accepted tong alternative hypothesis natin. Oh, so, ito na yung conclusion ko. <clears throat> so, since we reject the null hypothesis, we can conclude that there is enough evidence to support the claim. Ano ba yung claim? That the monthly salary of college dean is more than 63,000. So, ganyan po natin sasagutan Yung example number one. Question. Yes, Arnold. Paano ko po kung, ano, kung hindi na-reject yung non-hypothesis? Okay. Okay. Sabi mo, sir, paano pag hindi na-reject yung non-hypothesis? So, inaccept natin kunyari. Kung inaccept natin yung null hypothesis dito, hindi mo masasabi na meron kang enough evidence. So, ilagay mo lang dito, <clears throat> we can conclude that there is uh, no or not enough evidence to support the claim. Lalagay mo lang ng word na no or not. Kasi parang kulang yung ano natin, um, yung record natin o yung statistical data natin na kaya natin patunayan na mas mataas sa 63,000 yung sahod ng college din. Ganun lang siya, Arnold. Lagyan mo lang ng no or not. Okay na yon. Basta any, any grammar, as long na yung pinapalabas natin is kulang yung evidence o kulang yung oh, evidence to support yung claim yung kiniklaim natin na okay na po yun. So kahit hindi po ganyan, saktong-sakto yung conclusion ninyo, okay lang as long that the main idea of your sentence is tama, I'm going to accept it. Any question pa pa? Before we proceed, wag pong may hiyang magtanong, ha? Lagi po bang nire-reject yung null hypothesis? Again, Arnold, sorry. Lagi po bang nire-reject yung null hypothesis? Ang um, bali, Arnold, ang ire-reject lang natin at ang i-accept lang natin is lagi lang al uh, yung null hypothesis. Hindi yung parang ano Arnold, um iset mo na sa mind mo na pagdating dun sa decision making, ang lagi lang natin o oh, lagi lang tayo magbe-base doon sa null hypothesis. Okay? Kung rejected yung null mo, ibig sabihin noon accepted yung alternative. Kung accepted naman yung null Rejected naman yung alternative. 
Okay? So, hindi siya laging rejected. Pwede rin siyang ma-accept. Depende po sa decision rule natin. A question pa, bago tayo mag-proceed sa example number 2. Lahat na po ng gusto nyong itanong, itanong nyo na po. Huwag may hihiyang magtanong ha. May tanong pa ba? Naguguluhan? Okay, wala na ha. So, I believe you understand how to solve example number one from the given hanggang conclusion. So, on example number two, kayo na po magsasagot ha. Not literally kayo na, hihingiin ko yung opinion ninyo. And please respond on me once I call your name. Para at least hindi lang po kayo nagsasalita, we have interaction to each other. Okay? <clears throat> Example number two. Ako naman magbabasa. The average baptismal cost include 50 guests, a random sample of 32 baptismal during the past year in the national capital region had a mean of 53 guests and a standard deviation of 10. Is there sufficient evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance that the average number of guests differs from the national average? So take a screenshot. Tignan nyo na yung mga numbers. Identify nyo na yung given. Okay? Now, let's start. Let's find the given. What is the sample mean? Volunteer? 32 po. 32? Basahin na ng maayos. Min ang min mo na. Sample min. 50 po. 50 or 53? Christian? 53. Okay. So, the sample mean is 53. Sir, sa mo naman nakita yan. Ayun, nakalagay. Had a mean of 53 guests. A random sample of 32 baptismal during the past year in the NCR had a mean. So, automatically, this is a sample. How about the population mean? 50. Okay, 50. From the first sentence, my word na average. Okay, so, includes 50 guests. How about the standard deviation? Is it sample or population? Sample. Okay, sample. And what is the standard deviation? 10. 10. Very good. And lastly, the sample size. Okay, 32. So those are the given. Listed dun sa word problem. Okay? Next one. Hypothesis, and then identify the claim. Sinong makapag-identify or makakapag-state pala muna ng null hypothesis? Tignan niyo yung pinaka-question ha. Nandun yung clue ko anong sign yung gagamitin ninyo. Ah, sige, tanongin muna natin. Ano yung sign? na gagamitin natin. Is it equal? Greater than? Or less than? Ano ba yung word na napansin ninyo na magbibigay ng hint para malaman natin kung ano yung sign? 
D first. Okay, D first. Very good, Christian. And pag sinabi natin D first, greater than or less than. Greater than or less than. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng D for? Arnold. Not equal. Not equal. So, Christian, pag sinabi natin D for, ibig sabihin, ang parang merong, apat tawag dito? Meron silang pagkakaiba. Hindi sila equal. So, not equal. Very good, Arnold. So, kapag not equal, is it alternative or hypothesis? Ah, alternative or null hypothesis? Ha? Alternative. Alternative. One-tailed, two-tailed? Two-tailed. Two-tailed. Okay. So, alam nyo na ha? Two-tailed siya. Ang claim natin is... Alternative hypothesis, which is not equal. Ano naman yung null hypothesis? Equal. Oh, okay, Arnold. Pa-state ng buong null hypothesis. Parang nung example number one lang. Mu. Start ka ng mu, mu or null arter, null null hypothesis is to mu what? Mu is equal or not equal? Equal fifty po. Okay. So, ang, ang null hypothesis natin is mu equal sa 50. Oh, yung alternative natin, kabalik taran. Not equal to 50. And then, based din po dun sa word problem kanina, ang sabi, D first. Or may, may, pag, may diferensya or meron silang pagkakaiba. So, ang kiniklaim natin, is yung alternative hypothesis. So, pakita ulit sa inyo yung table, ha? So, ito siya. So, sabi nyo kanina, differ. So, not equal. That is alternative. Kabalik na rin ng not equal. Equal. Okay. Null hypothesis. Under siya ng two-tailed. Ayan yung tatandaan nyo ha. Two-tailed siya. And yung claim natin, eto, yung alternative hypothesis. Maliwanag na ba? Or nagugul... Sorry. Or nagugulan pa kayo sa pag-state ng hypothesis? Umamin. Nagets? Hindi. Hindi. Okay. Yung iba naman dyan, magsalita-salita naman kayo, ha? What is the level of significance? 0.05. Okay, that will be 0.05. Okay, or the alpha is 0.05. Next. Alin dyan? One-tailed? Two-tailed? Two-tailed. Two-tailed siya. So, tignan na. Hanapin. 1.960. Okay. So, ito siya. Sa two-tailed, yung 0.05. Tingin sa letter Z. Pagtapatin. 1.960. So, that is the critical value. Okay. Next one. Computation. Substitute lang lahat ng given. Here we go. So, the answer is 1.697. Okay, solve ninyo. Pareho ba tayo? 
Sino nakakuha ng 1.697? O sabihin niyo baka mali yung competition ko, ha? Baka may mali din sa akin. Double check everyone. So, solve natin. 53 minus 50. That is 3. Divide sa 10. Divide sa square root ng 32. Ano ang square root ng 32? 5 point. 66. Then, 10 divide 5.66. That will be 1.77. And then, 3 divide 1.77 is 1.697. Pacheck po ako kung tama. Mag-react kung mali. <clears throat> Okay, mer meron po ba akong kapareho ng sagot? May nag-try pala ba? po yung nakuha ko. 1.695. Ano kasi 95? Ano ginawa mo na? E, iba po sa cellphone ko eh. Ganun po lumalabas. Sir, pag hindi po ginagamit ng... 1.77 po yung ano, ginagawa ito. Okay. Ulitin natin, ha? Kasi, saya kanila daw, 1.695. So, sa akin, 1.697. Sa cellphone po kasi, sir. Okay lang yan na kahit sa cellphone. As long naman na tama naman yun, wala namang, ba wala namang ano yung barrier. Okay. Isaysay natin, ha? Gamitin natin yung buo. Yung buong decimal point. Huwag mo na tayo mag-round off. Check natin ha kung tama tayo. Kung pareho pa din tayo ng part. So, Z is equal to 3 over 10. Ano ang square root ng 32? 5 point. Check nyo ha kung tama ako. 5.65 6.8 42495 Pareho ba tayo ng square root ng 32? Ako. Okay. Next. Kopyahin yung 3. Then divide natin si 10 dito. Check nyo kung pareho pa din tayo ha. Tama ba na 1.7677 66953 Tama po ba? Okay. And then lastly, divide natin. Lalabas sa dyan 1.697 O mali pa din? O po sir, lumabas na. 1.697 Lumabas na po. Okay. Ano yung ginawa nyo pala, Christian? Bakit nag 1.695? 1.77 po yung sa... 1.27. 27. 1.27 po. Bakit na? Anong ginawa? Nag-round off ka na ba agad? Okay. Anong ni-round off mo dito? 5. Yung point... second decimal po. Adi, so Nung 1.76 po, ginawa akong 1.77 niya. Sige, try nyo nga, mga anak. 3 divide 1.77. Anong answer? 1.69491525. Ah, okay. So, iba talaga siya. Ah, sige. Tatanggapin na lang din natin yun. So, si teacher, once na nagbigay ng activity like this, Uh, meron akong tatanggapin na answer na ganon. So, magagawa si teacher ng solution na kompleto yung decimal. Gagawa rin ako ng solution na kung saan nakaround off na sa two decimal places. Okay ba yun? Okay. So, question? 
Wala naman. Okay. Tandaan nyo ha, ito yung nakuha natin. 1.697. Decision. Anong decision natin? Ano bang mas malaki? Yung critical value o itong letter Z? Letter Z po. Yung letter? Z. Okay. Check natin ha. So, si 1.697 is less than to 1.960. Okay? Hindi lang to, basta 1.960, ah. Positive-negative talaga to. Under, parang analyze na lang din kasi both sides. Meron tayo sa left, meron tayo sa right. Okay? So, check natin. Bakit do not reject. Drawing tayo. Yes, Arnold. Hindi po siya maano, masasama sa shaded part. Ano yung tawag sa shaded part na yun, Arnold? Hindi po siya ano, critical, hindi po siya nasa critical region. Okay, very good. So, check natin para mas ma-visualize din ng iba. So, normal curve. So, zero. So, we have negative 1.960. And this will be the critical region. And then, on the other side, positive 1.960. Ito yung critical region. So, mas maliit to si 1.697 o yung letter Z. So, assuming nandito lang siya banda. 1.697. So, si 1.697, naglalay siya sa non-critical region. Kaya po, accept. Ayan. Pwede mo sabihin na accept, pwede rin do not reject. So, pareho lang po yun ha. So, kung gusto nyo isulat, accept the null hypothesis, okay lang. Do not reject, okay lang din. Pareho lang naman kasi ang ibig sabihin. Nagkakaintindihan. Huwag na kayong gumamit ng iba pang word, ha? Accept na lang siya ka do not reject. Sa ibang libro kasi, hindi sila gumagamit ng accept. Laging reject, do not reject. Meron pa ngang do not accept. Pero yung word na accept, parang madaalang lang, pero sige, go. Since pareho naman ng ibig sabihin, we will be considering it as your answer. Okay, so do not reject or accept. Pwede po. Ano ulit yung in-accept natin? Alternative o null? Okay, yung null hypothesis. Conclusion. So, ito yung magiging conclusion ni sir. So, since we do not reject the null hypothesis or since we accept the null hypothesis, we can conclude that there is no, okay, hindi enough yung evidence para supportahan yung claim that the average guest in baptismal is not equal to 50. So, ganyan lang siya. Madali lang ba? Yes or no? Yes, pero po mahaba. Mahaba lang. Marami lang step, no? Masyado siyang matrabaho. Huwag kayong mag-alala, masasanay kayo. Start ng unit 4 hanggang matapos. Puro ganyan. Step by step. Okay? Any questions so far? For example, number 2? Or any question about the topic? Wala pa? Uh, next one. Ibahin ko naman ng konti. This is the traditional method. Paano kapag may halong p-value? Okay. Kapag may p-value, iba rin po yung way ng pag-solve. Okay. Example number three. A researcher claimed that the monthly consumption of coffee per person is more than 19 cups. 
in a sample of 60 randomly selected people, the mean monthly consumption was 20. The standard division of the sample was 4 cups. Find the p-value of the test. And based to the p-value, is the researcher's claim valid at 0 0.01? So, yan yung patutunayan natin. So, this time, kung napansin ninyo, ano yung bakit may paghanap ng p-value? Okay? So, ito na po yung p-value method. So, pag na-encountered nyo to, ganito lang yung gagawin ninyo. Una, given. Ay, na-screenshot nyo ba? Or nasulat nyo na yung mga number? Pababalik ako. Oh, wag na. So, what is the sample mean? For example, number 3. Twenty. Twenty. Very good. So, the sample mean is 20. How about the population mean? 60. Population mean. Christian? More than 19. Ah, hindi tayo gagamit ng more than, ha? I mean, ano pa lang to? Identify, identifying the given pa lang. So, mamaya na yung more than mo, Christian. So, the population mean is 19. How about the standard division? Is it population or sample? Sample po. Okay. Sample. And what is the standard division? Four cups. Four po. Four. Okay, that is four. Very good, everyone. So, kaya na natin ito sa susunod. And, ayan, napakita ko na. So, the sample size is 60. So, ito yung given natin. Next one. State the hypothesis. O, tatanungin ko muna kayo ulit, ha? Ano yung gustong i-claim ng researcher? Mas mataas din. Mas mataas sa? 19. Okay, more than 19 cups daw. So, kapag more than, is it left or right-tailed? Right-tailed. Very good. Now, Ano yung kiniklaim natin? Kasi more than. Null or alternative hypothesis? Alternative. Uh, very good. Alternative hypothesis. So, kabalik taran lang ng more than or ng greater than, less than or equal. So, that will be the null hypothesis. And then, alternative is greater than 19 cups. And also, alternative will be the claim. So, ito yung gusto nating patunayan, or ito yung kiniklaim ng researcher, na more than 19 cups daw yung consume per person. So, ganun pa din siya. Ayan pa rin yung table para ma-visualize nyo. So, more than, that is greater than, under ng alternative, opposite, less than or equal, for the null hypothesis. And this is a right-tailed or a one-tailed test. Okay? Level of significance? 0 0.01. 0 0.01, as always. It was listed also on the word problem. And then, let's compute. Okay. So, gagamitin pa rin natin yung computation, yung formula pala kanina, which is this one. So, 20... Po, Arnold? Yung critical value po. At this time, Arnold, since p-value method kasi yung hinahanap natin, wala po, hindi po natin gagamitin yun. Okay po. Okay? So, for, pagkatapos nun, netong level of significance... Diretso tayo ng computation, which is this one. So, ang answer natin, 
is 1.94. This time, uh, children, kapag ang ginagamit natin is p-value method, hindi po yung kaninang table yung gagamitin natin. Yung table natin nung sa normal curve or normal distribution. Tandaan nyo ito ha, 1.94. Ito yung gagamitin natin. Yung ginamit natin last time. So, same process. Look kayo dito sa gilid, which is yung 1.9. And then sa taas, yung pang second decimal place, which is 4.04. So, ito siya. Then, pagkapatin natin, ito siya. 0.4. 4738 Okay? So, siya yan. Ngayon, find the p-value. Ganto na po siya. So, yung area kanina, sabi under the curve, wait lang ha, ayan. Ang sabi, that is 1.94. Ito yung area ha, under the curve. Sulat ko na nga rin. Area under the curve. Yan. And then, yung nakuha natin kanina, eto nga yun, yung 1.94, which is using the table a while ago, this is 0.4738. O, oh, drawing ko ha. Normal curve. Ano yung mean natin? 19. O, oh, nandito yung positive, nandito yung negative. So, assuming kasi nasa right tail siya, kasi greater than daw, which is yung 20, yan siya. O, oh, ano yung area na yan? Itong part na to. Pero kanina kasi, meron tayong given na level of significance which is 0.01. Andito siya banda. So, maliit lang siya na part. etong line na to ha, this is 0.01. So, ito yung critical region. So, anong gagawin namin dyan? Anong gagawin namin sa 0.4738? Okay. Okay. Ang gagawin po natin dyan, kagaya ng ginagawa natin before, isosubtract natin si 0.5000 kay 0.4738 kasi kalahati lang. Yung positive side lang. So, gagawin 0.5000 minus 0.4738. Ano ang answer? Ang answer po is 0 0.0262. Sir, nasaan to? Ito po siya. Yung 20. That is 0 0.0262. Did you get me? So, ano yung p-value? The p-value is this one. Yung 0 0.0262. Magulo? <laughs> Agets nyo? Medyo. Medyo. Ulitin ko ha. Ang unang-unang gagawin natin, guys, kapag ganito yung na-encountered natin na given, pinapahanap yung p-value. Okay. Yes, we will be still using the formula, which is yung kaninang ginamit natin po na... Hold on, nawawala yung mouse ko. Ito yung formula natin na x ay uh, yung mean minus mu over... Standard deviation, square root ng n. Yes, gagamitin natin itong formula para mahanap natin ito, 
si Z. Pag nahanap na natin, balikan natin yung table na ginamit natin nung nakaraan for the normal distribution. And then makikita natin to. Okay? Now, para mahanap yung p-value, ganito lang lagi. Kapag kalahating part lang, 0.5 thousand. Or that is 50%. Then, yung answer doon, yun po yung p-value. Okay? Pag p-value, sir, lagi pong ma-minus sa 0.5,000. Kapag one-tailed. Ah, okay po. Di ba, kagaya nung ng mga nakaraan, nung normal distribution, minsan hindi naman tayo nag-subtract sa 50%. Minsan, hahanapin natin yung z-value neto nung isa, yung c-value nung isa, then minsan pinagko-combine, pinagsusubtract natin. So, depende pa rin po sa scenario. Okay, but on this part, since this is a one-tailed, so nasa right side lang siya, kaya half lang. 50%. Okay? So, ayan yung p-value na pinapahanap sa atin. Since nakita natin yung p-value, pwede na tayo mag-decide. Saan natin i-compare pala muna yung p-value? Kasi kanina, ang kino-compare natin, yung nakuha natin sa table, and then yung sample z-test. O yung critical value, compared sa z-test. Paano kapag p-value method yung ginamit? Ano yung pagko-compare natin? The level of significance. Okay. The p-value and the level of significance. And based on the illustration na nakikita nyo dyan, what will be the decision? Oh, balikan ko ha. Oh, tignan nyo yung normal curve. Yung p-value nasa non-critical region. Ano ang decision rule? Do not reject. Okay. What? Do not reject. Kasi... Eh, hindi kasi. <laughs> Do not reject yung ano. Ano ba nire-reject natin? Alter. The p-value. Ulitin ko ha. Di ba sabi ko sa inyo, ang i-accept lang, ang i-reject, null hypothesis. Ano ulit yung decision, Arnold, or sino sa inyo? Do not reject. Do not reject. Yung ano? Do not. Okay. We will not be rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay? Kasi nasa non-critical region siya. Tandaan nyo lang lagi ah, null hypothesis lang lagi ang reject tsaka accept. Bakit po? Mas mataas si 0.02 kaysa sa 0.01. Okay? So, yun na nga yun, yung graph kanina. So, hindi ko na i-drawing ulit dito. What will be the conclusion? Since hindi natin reject, uh, failed to reject, ibig sabihin, accepted yun. Ay! Nalilito na ako. Ano ba yung decision natin? We will not reject. So, ibig sabihin, kung hindi natin nire-reject yung null, accepted. Na kung That's saan, enough. ano ba yung null hypothesis natin? Less than or equal sa ilang cups? 19 cups. Ano ang conclusion? Not enough evidence. Not enough evidence to what? Ano, ano, tandaan nyo ulit yung ano ha, yung 
word problem. Ang gusto patunayan ng researcher na more than 19 cups daw ng coffee yung tinitake ng person per day. sa monthly monthly consumption. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So Ano dapat ang conclusion? Anyone who would like to try? <clears throat> Arnold. Try mo lang. Wait pa. Wait pa. Oh, habang initay natin si Arnold, how about yung iba? Oh, yung iba dyan. Gising, gising. Since we do not reject the null hypothesis, we can conclude that there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the, that the monthly consumption of coffee per person is more than 19 cups. Okay. So, very good, Arnold. So, tama naman yon. And this is my conclusion naman on my part. So, since we failed to reject the null hypothesis, we can conclude that the monthly consumption of coffee per person is not more than 19 cups. So, okay lang yung sagot mo, Arnold. Nagat ko naman yung point mo. Okay lang din kapag ganti yung form. So, any questions so far? Because that will be the last example. Question, guys? So, that will be the end of my presentation. Now, 